Hey everyone, I'm the Fluffy Game Dev. I make some tutorials on game development with a focus on clean and reusable architecture. When writing some code, it's best to break it down in smaller reusable components. For example, health doesn't need to be handled in both a player class and an enemy class. Might as well just have a single health class that can be used by both the player and the enemies. Today I will be talking about event channels and how they can be used to keep your components separate. As always, all the code I produce is available on my GitHub. Feel free to use it as much as you want. To illustrate this subject I made a small example scene where the player can walk around while avoiding being shot by some turrets. Whenever the player is hit by a bullet, they will lose some health. And when that health reaches zero, the player dies. The health is handled by the health script. This component can go on pretty much any game object that can be killed, such as the player or enemy NPCs. So it would make sense that to display the health, we will have to modify that script in some way. Let's talk about a few ways you can implement the health display in the user interface. The first way you may consider implementing the health display is by keeping a reference to the UI element directly in the health component. That way, whenever the health changes, we can directly update the UI. In this case, we can set the health in some text field. However, this method has several issues. The first one being that we reference the UI directly from a non-UI behavior. So in other words, the code implies that to have some health, you also need a UI element, which may not always be the case for enemy NPCs. The second issue is that if we want to change how the health UI looks like, we must also modify the health script itself. On smaller projects, this may not matter, but it can on larger ones. To remedy the second issue, we can have a health UI script to handle the UI specific code. The health component can then notify the health UI script whenever the health changes. That way, if we want to replace the text field with a health bar, then we only need to modify the health UI script. But this still doesn't remedy our first issue, the health component still depends on the UI. To fix this, we can rely on a Unity event that can be sent whenever the health is changed. The health UI script can then register to that event in order to update the UI. That way, the health component doesn't depend on the UI anymore. But now, imagine you are working on a huge project with many scenes. To avoid copying the UI in each scene, you'll have to move it to a prefab or a separate scene. Personally, I would go for the separate scene. Either way, this brings a new issue, which is that we can't plug the health UI script to the Unity event in the health component anymore. So how do we fix that? This is where event channels come into play. Event channels are some scriptable objects that contain an event and a function to raise that event. In this case, I have created a health channel. This channel has an event that can be called whenever some health changes. Since event channels are scriptable objects, we can plug them in as many scenes as we need. So we can plug the health event to the Unity event on the health component, and we can modify the health UI script to listen to the health channel callback. And with just that, the health bar functions once again. You've seen how we can use event channels to separate the UI from gameplay code. But what other uses can we find to event channels? One use can be to implement achievements in your game. For example, let's say you want an achievement when the player kills a thousand enemies. To do so, you'll need some kind of tracking system. And you can use some event channels to handle the communication between the gameplay code and the tracking code. Another example can be audio. Let's say you have several audio channels. Perhaps one for sound effects and another for background music. You can handle that with an audio event channel. And each audio channel can have an instance of that scriptable object. And there you go! You now know how to create your own event channels. You can use them to separate your gameplay code from the UI, but also from other systems. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing for some similar content. And if you have some questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section, I would be glad to answer. In any event, have fun coding and see you next time!